Best of luck with that. Now, our next guest has done it all. Last year, he completed 43 marathons in 51 days. As a comedian, he's broken box office records with his sellout stand up shows, and he's even fulfilled his dream of cracking the US as an acclaimed Hollywood actor. Well, earlier this week, we caught up with the king of comedy, Eddie Izzard, to find out the secret to his phenomenal success. <laughs> No, 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 I claim India for Britain. You can't claim us, we live here. You have a flag. So the most dangerous thing you were thinking then when you were watching that back was the, was the shirt. Yes, the shirt, <laughs> which I thought was a pretty good buy at the time. It shows, because uh, I'm an action transvestite, I know about fighting and makeup. And, and people say, oh, you know, you have that whole putting things together, design things, and it's all about the. No, because as that shirt shows, I, have n I had to really work at being able to try to match things. So, what was, what was the reason for making this? Because it's kind of it's a documentary of your life, really, and it starts right off from being a child and sort of your reasons for getting into showbiz, I guess. Yeah, well, if you see, it, it's, it's about this endless struggle, because nothing really took off till I was 30, and I really decided to act when I was seven. So there's about, it seems a bit weird, but there's, there's, there's about 20 years of me plan, trying to work out how to get anything going. And I thought, you know, 18 or 19, I'd leave, drop out of university, and then it would take off, and it really didn't. So um, it's, hopefully it's quite a good for anyone to watch. I mean, because I did all these marathons, and hopefully people wonder how I was so determined. Mm. That kind of shows the determination. But it seems like you took a lot of risks, because um, you, so you you opened your own comedy club in, in the West End, mm -hmm. didn't you? And this was something, I mean, you're not someone who had, like, huge financial backing behind you. You just no. sort of thought, right, I've got to go for this. And it was sort of, you know, I, make I, I lost quite a lot of cash on yeah. that, but I gained a great experience of, um, of being able to host a, a, a centre of London gig. Mm. I got very used to having to do, deal, uh, do gigs there, rush off and do other gigs to pay for the gig that I was doing that was losing money. Well, um, you said that at the time, in the 1990s, you described uh, on there that, uh, that London was the, uh, the comedy, it was, it was the biggest in the world, the comedy centre of, yeah. of the world at the time. Well, I a massive amount of clubs. I think it, no, I think it is now. We have, we have, if you go into Time Out and you add up all the clubs, there's about 70 to 80 to 90 clubs. It's a ridiculous amount. New York has about 10, LA has about 8. Mm. We've got about 8. 80. And it's because it's because of so, something to do with our system. We have rooms above pubs. They're not being used. They're function rooms. And so they say, well, we'll t you know, the bar says, you know, the pub says, we'll take the, the, the bar money and you can take the door money. And that's so that exists. And, but they pay you money. In New York and L.A., they're like showcase places where they don't even pay you. Yeah. You just go on for beer or something. Well, uh, how, do you, how would you describe your, your life? Because I don't know whether it's... It, looking through, you know, things that are on here, which is like, it's like a DVD autobiography, really, isn't it? It's a little bit of evidence. Yeah, hopefully... But Hopefully it's one that digs in as opposed to, you know, oh, he's got trousers, he's got a hat. You know, this one hopefully goes in there and... Because Sarah Townsend, who, who did it, I initially asked her to, to shoot one of the shows. She said she'd rather do um, a, a documentary, so... Well, well look at, looking at that, I, d I, can't, I couldn't f quite figure out whether or not you are a master planner or incredibly lucky or your life is just haphazard and things just happen to you? I, I am a ridiculous planner. I plan militarily. Otherwise, you know, transvestites, careers, you know, try to get all that going. It's, it's a little tricky. But you can't, you can't say, I will be there at this point. You can just line things up and then when things shift around, it sort of clicks in. It's like a cog kick clicking in. Well, how do you but, plan to be an escapologist then? I mean, what oh, was, no, I didn't did plan come? to be an escapologist. But that was... The, what, the way I was doing it at Covent Garden, which is just over the river, I was, um, it, it actually looks harder than it is, the way I was doing it, or the way a lot of us do it. I mean, uh, um, who was the favourite? Houdini. Houdini yeah. He'd do really difficult stuff in, in underwater well, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. <laughs> what we were doing wasn't so I'd difficult. I'd say that Houdini was doing really difficult stuff. Really yeah. difficult <laughs> stuff. You, but we were just talking a lot. But you, you, you did get stuck. I once. did twice. I got twice I couldn't get out. <laughs> and then it was... <laughs> well, it was one of the other uh, street performers, a guy called Paul Keane, who said, you've got to believe you can get out before you 
you can get out. And this believe thing became part of a mantra, which is, you know, a lot of people say you've got to believe you can be a stand-up comedian, you've got to be your presenter before you become a presenter, did and you, that became the title. In which case, then, did you believe, with only five weeks training, that you could do a seven-week yes. marathon? Because that, I mean, that is a phenomenal feat for anyone. I mean, for somebody who, I mean, I don't know what your fitness level was like beforehand, but... My stamina level was high. My fitness, well, I mean, I do gigs in French. I'm going to do more than next year, but that's harder than the... The marathons. America is physically harder, but it, it's it's in there. Now, my analogy: I think anyone can do these things because you know a lot of people do do amazing stuff. Uh, it's World War II, as my example. From the democratic countries around the world, a lot of people of our grandparents' generation they went out and did things they were never planning to do mm. because the time was very stressful. So they thought we've got to step up to the plate and, mm. and do this. But I can arrange that in my head. I can artificially arrange. But they were they were hardy folk in hardy times. I mean, you were a, you at the, at the time were a soft turn. I like setting up difficult things. I learned to fly because I was scared of flying. I've taken up swimming now because I was really scared of swimming. I like pushing the boundaries. You do, don't you? Like a challenge. Well, I, hopefully, you know, some other kids in the UK will go, well, hey, let's go and do that. Yeah. I like, you know, because I grew I felt I grew up in the 70s when it was like, oh, we're no longer an empire, so what do we, we don't have ambition. And I like having ambition, go and doing positive things. <laughs> Nelson Mandela, an ambitious guy. Um, I, m I met him in January. I went and did gigs in South Africa. He's ambitious to, to you know, to free his country from apartheid, and 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 I, I think ambition is great. And I sort of want to, I want to show it and so do it. So you're never, you can't ever be bored then. No, I, I'm not good. I'm not good at holidays. I don't know how to do holidays. I know how to do tasks. I know how to set things up and go for them. And and that's what really gets me going. And, oh, and without I wish that, I was I... a bit more like that. Sorry, I said I wish I was a bit more like that. Well, I think it's a great quality to have. Yeah, it's it's weird because it does it does mean that relaxing is just your biggest nightmare. Yes, um, and is your head going all the time. Yeah, I does I think okay, what do I do? I'm just I'm just watching telly and uh, and I start hating myself. So I just need to hating keep... Hating yourself because you're just watching telly. Yeah, and, and I have to keep setting things up. And then I think I haven't run a marathon in a while, so. <laughs> Oh, I was thinking that this morning. <laughs> yeah. We're thrilled to have you here, Lovely and, uh, to meet you. and thank you so thank much you. for coming in. There it is. It's it's believe uh, and uh, and insp sort of inspirational stuff as well. They will get us out doing all sorts of stuff. I know. Hopefully, Just be hopefully. careful if you choose the escapology. Yeah. <laughs> thank you Thanks, very Andy. much. Thanks very thank much. You. Thank you. That's it from.